T.O. please. Hey there, this is T.O. bringing another Kerbal Space Program video. It's been quite a while since my last video, and I've got some free time, so I thought I would look at my old captures and my notes and see what I can throw together. And in this video, I remember putting this together fondly, somewhat, somewhat not so fondly. So um, in career mode, in the uh, vehicle assembly, no, I'm sorry, in the tracking station, all the vehicles you've ever launched are in chronological order from either when they were launched or when they were, I guess, like detached from another vehicle. So in theory, your oldest builds would still be at the top of the list and your newest or most used would be at the bottom of the list. And for a long time, my, f my first ever satellite was at the top of the list. And the game started to get real sluggish. I decided to clean house and get rid of all those old things that I didn't need anymore and deleted a bunch of old crafts. And I was kind of sad about deleting at least my first satellite because it was like one of the first real good, real fun challenges that I conquered. So uh, once the uh, patch came, not the patch, but the update came out that allowed you to do EVA construction, I got the idea of modifying my sec, my next oldest vehicle, the one at the top of the list, to make it my first ever satellite. So to do that, I uh, obviously went to the list and uh, top of the list is a surface probe on the MUN, which is not that far from Kerbin. And a uh, pretty similar construction to my first satellite. So here you see I've built this rover and I sent it to the MUN. And on this rover, there are lots of parts that I'm gonna need to convert that, uh, that surface little probe into an actual satellite. And I ran into some problems I did not anticipate. So if, if you happen to notice there on the screen, I was having trouble getting the ship to behave properly. And here you're gonna see again, Parts of the ship just don't behave according to normal game physics. I could not understand, couldn't figure out why, couldn't get it to, to stop. So I had I had to ditch my pilot's little vehicle in orbit, and then here the lander. Um, there, I'm, I'm gonna try again. The, the the actual rover never touches the surface of the moon. The uh, the rocket stage is fine. Uh, I'm supposed to stage long before this and land with the rover, but I. I once the, as soon as the rover separates, it stops obeying the laws of physics and it just hangs in the air. So uh, I decided I don't want to revert the whole thing back to the launch. Let me see if I can just land this thing with the Rhino engine as close as possible to the little probe. And I can just walk the parts over. Or in this case, uh, use the EVA propellant to fly the parts over. So i uh, tried several, several attempts. This was the strangest issue. I've never had this issue happen again in the game. Um, you, you can see the, the planet's still turning, Every, all the other vehicles are moving around, but as soon as I stage the rover, the rover itself just sits in the air. So here I've got it pretty close. I don't even need it to stay upright, I just need it to not completely break. And look, there's the, <laughs> the rover's just hanging there, it's not moving at all. But uh, that's okay, I, I think I can work with it, so go ahead and get my engineer out. And this is like one of the first times I've, I've tinkered around with the EVA construction. So uh, definitely learn some things to do and not to do. Um, obviously having the game glitch like this, couldn't, couldn't have planned for that, but uh, assuming it doesn't happen now, EV construction is way more manageable. So here I am trying to get a little closer again, trying to get the vehicle closer to the ground. Um, attempt after attempt after attempt, lots and lots of fun beating my head against the wall. Um, Another issue I would have is the astronaut would, or the Kerbinaut would kind of get uh, affected by this physics glitch and he would just walk in midair, which was a problem because then he wouldn't um, descend. He would only ascend. So anytime I would jump or he would hit a, a, a port, it would cause him to, to raise his altitude, but I could never get him to lower it. So that wasn't functional. So here you go. I found the probe. I've, I've gotten pretty dang close to it. I need to add some fuel because I think that tank is uh, pretty empty. And also on my original um, satellite, it had a Terrier engine. So I brought the Terrier along just in case, but I think it's too heavy for this Kerbinaut to manipulate at the Mun in the Mun's gravity. So essentially all I have to do is get this thing enough fuel and a, enough thrust to get off the surface of the Mun. If I can get it in the orbit around the Mun, then I could stop using this funky uh, 
rover design that clearly had issues and i can just send up uh, a different craft with the proper ports to finish the conversion to a proper satellite and also to give it enough fuel to send itself back to Kerbin. so that's the plan let's just get this thing off the surface of the moon and we can we can do the rest of our modifications in orbit so my my first satellites my first uh, probes all had those nose cones because that was before I had fairings and I needed it to be aerodynamic. So that just sat at the top of the rocket, just like that. The uh, solar panels, when they were retracted, were kind of offset into the rocket so that they, they weren't, hopefully weren't creating any drag. And um, definitely would have had a Terrier engine on those first satellites. It's like one of the first good efficient vacuum engines you get. I'll also take the landing legs off, obviously, and I think I'm also going to take that little golden uh, fuel tank off because it wouldn't have had that back when I first installed the game. That was back before I put any expansions into use. I think I probably got what to, to Duna or maybe some of the other planets and realized, yep, this is addicting and fun. I need to get these expansions and see what they're all about. And I'm glad I did. It gives you a whole lot more parts to play with and a whole lot more things to do. Pretty much got the EVA done, the EVA construction anyway, and uh, because the the return vehicle got staged earlier and it was causing issues as well, I don't have a way for the pilot to get back in this video, but uh, rest assured he does get back, not to say pilot, the engineer. The engineer is going to make it back to Kerbin because this is career mode and I need all my Kerbinots that I can get to run missions and do other fun things. So I guess I'm slapping on a little bit more fuel, going with the smaller engine again, I can't can't use the terrier in this gravity with one engineer. We would need multiple engineers. I guess I'm taking the lights off now. Might as well. I'm going to take the landing legs off. Uh, better not do it now. Yeah, better wait until this thing's in orbit. I was trying to reduce weight, to reduce you know its mass as much as possible. Oof. I also uh, should have kept it symmetrical just to, to make sure my center of mass was was good in line with the engine. But one one landing leg difference isn't you know going to hurt. So. Got plenty of uh, Delta V with those tanks and with that engine. So let's get this thing into orbit and uh, leave that stupid rover behind. I think I even used the uh, engineer's EVA pack, got him away from the rover, deleted the rover, just pretend it never existed, and sent something else to rescue the engineer. The moon is not that far from Kerbin. It's what, a couple days flight? So if we're going for realism, not a big deal. Just chill on the moon for a couple days you brought snacks here we're going to circularize our orbit around the moon and then we can go into phase two and convert this bad boy to a proper satellite doesn't need landing legs get rid of those fuel tanks i can also grab grab onto it now with a claw and just refuel the main tank instead of having to strap on new full tanks so that is the plan don't need a great orbit but I do like to um, leave all my crafts in a uh, I guess a non-inclined whatever term that might be in a, in a nice non-inclined orbit so that um, all the different orbits of all the different vehicles are all concentric and they all look nice there you go I'm giving up on this craft I don't want the whole thing to, to blow up because uh, there you see I'm <laughs> trying to flip it over now it seems to be behaving more uh, correctly, but if I can get the pilot off of the surface, I don't remember this part. I guess I tried to use the uh, the part that comes with the uh, breaking ground, is it? Or the other expansion, anyway. I always use this one incorrectly. Now I've learned if you use the uh, moon lander replica command module, it doesn't need any additional fuel, any additional thrusters. It doesn't need anything. The part is purely designed to leave the surface of the moon with two carbonites. And it uses RCS to position itself. You don't need to put a reaction wheel. You don't need to put any of the fuel tanks. If you add anything like that to that lunar lander um, module, command module, it's going to throw off the center of mass and make the whole thing harder to fly. So I flew it incorrectly in this video. Don't do what I did. But I'll go rescue that Kerbinot later. At least now he's in the orbit of the moon. Or the mun, which is easier to, to work with. And there's the uh, the craft that I'd left in orbit before. Apparently it is functional. And it's got the claw 
So I thought in advance, I'll, I'll put it in orbit, grab it, refuel it. And if I need to, I can also use this vehicle to, to adjust its orbit and put it in the orbit of Kerbin, which I may in fact do, because I've got the more efficient engines on this little transfer vehicle. And that way I can guarantee the satellite gets back in orbit around Kerbin. As far as what orbit I'm going to put it in around Kerbin, I'm sure my first satellite was at a pretty low orbit, less, less than 100,000 meters for sure. So I'll probably park it somewhere around there. But there you see, I lined up the uh, claw with the soon to be satellite as best I could in case I was going to use it as a transfer vehicle. So the mass would be nice and centered and it wouldn't uh, cause me to wobble or have, have any issues like that. But go ahead and extend my solar panels, get my maneuver node set, and let's get this thing over to Kerbin. So I haven't released any videos in a while, but I have re recorded some footage. I've got a lot of, I say a lot, I've got two bigger side projects that um, I kind of want to wait and release at least closer to fit completion. So they could be multiple videos each. And uh, every, you know, every time I play, 50% you know, of the time that I'm playing, I'll start recording footage for those two projects. So uh, when I do release them, there'll be quite a lot of content. It'll be hopefully something fun to watch. But that's part of the reason I haven't released anything is I don't have a whole lot of standalone ideas at the moment. I've got like two or three in the pipeline and that's it. But this is one of them. This is something I recorded a while back, uh, not long after the update had come out. So. Let's see, burning towards the target. Where am I sending this whole thing to? I don't remember. It's been that long. Am I sending it to the... Moon orbital station definitely could be. Don't know what else would have been in orbit around the moon at the time that would have necessitated the trip. Oh, might have been a rescue mission, honestly, because on con on a career mode, that's one of the main contracts that I'll always pick up rescue missions. Because when you get to the late stage of career mode and KSP, all the Kerbinots get super expensive to recruit, and their career their contracts become very very lucrative. So I am going to rescue my Kerber out. I'm not going to leave him stranded. What a good uh, overlord I am. I'm going to be kind and not leave my engineer stranded in space. So the mission wasn't a complete failure. Get both my Kerber back to Kerbin in this thing. Get my satellite to Kerbin. And did leave some debris on the surface of the moon. But hey, who, who hasn't left some good debris on the surface of the moon? Doing some EVA, not sure why. Am I gonna modify the satellite now that I've got my engineer back on board? Because before I, I just had my pilot. So I may decide, yep, go ahead and swap the engines now if I can. This would be an experiment. I'm gonna take the tanks off. I already transferred all the fuel. This is another thing that I learned um, about doing EVA construction. You can obviously put parts floating out in space. Those are gonna um, count as debris in the tracking station. So your best bet is to just put the parts back on the craft, one of the crafts. Try to put them in a symmetrical uh, arrangement so that they don't offset your center of mass. Or put them some in, on some ejectable part of the craft so that you can crash them into the surface of something and, and destroy them that way. But uh, Or you can do like me, you can leave them floating out in space and you can delete them from the tracking station later. This was a learning curve. So I've got the, the legs off, I've got the proper engine on, two solar panels. Let me go ahead and release my satellite. It's fully fueled. I just got to go back to Kerbin with it, and that's going to be plenty of fuel. Let me set this command module to act as debris, so the game's going to automatically delete it. For whatever reason, if something has a um, a control point, like a, a probe or a command module, you can set it to debris, and the game will delete it for you. But actual debris, like those uh, landing legs and, and whatnot, it doesn't detect that as debris for some reason. If you stage something off and that thing that you've staged doesn't have a control point, that acts as debris, which is nice. But So it's only when you're doing EVA construction that you can actually leave a mess. So send the satellite back to Kerbin. I'm going to do a little maneuver. Get a nice low periapsis, circularize more of it. Like I said, nothing eccentric. And I've got my satellite. And I thought 
this was a pretty decent success. You know, if it didn't, everything didn't quite work out the way I wanted it, but let's go ahead and rename it what I thought it was, ComSat1. And that's uh, one of the first things I put in orbit. The first things would have been uh, man, that would have had Kerbals in them, but that was like the first thing I left in orbit. It was ComSat1, because that was at the time when I thought I needed communication satellites, and I thought that that would be one. In hindsight, doesn't have any means of relaying signals, so it was really just for funsies, but... Let me get my Kerbals back at home. Let me set everything back to debris if I can. And then the moment of truth, I'm going to go to the tracking station and uh, not be disappointed, right? Because all this hard work um, would be for nothing if my plan didn't go as planned, which is the case, of course. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video, vehicles change order in the list depending on when they were launched or when they were manipulated. So my vehicle, which had gone to the surface of the moon, oh, it's not at the top of the list anymore. Where could it be? That's right, the bottom of the list. So <laughs> the only way to get ComSat-1 or SciSat-1, Science Satellite-1, to the top of the list would be to go and manipulate every other vehicle in the list. And who's going to do that? Not me. Sad day, but I got a decent video out of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've uh, messed with EVA construction if you play Kerbal Space Program. I appreciate you tuning in, and I will see you soon.